Let's quickly compare and contrast Walmart Fulfillment Services and Amazon FBA. So which one really saves you money and quickly delivers products to your customers? This is important because if you are in e-commerce, you definitely need to know whether WFS is better than Amazon FBA. So I want you to stick around till the end of today's conversation. You're going to love it. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you are to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, we want to talk about, we want to compare and contrast two players when it comes to e-commerce fulfillment. Okay, we are going to compare Walmart Fulfillment Services and Amazon FBA. So before we actually start, I just want to tell you that when we talk about e-commerce and retail market share, those two giants are doing or they are just vying for market share like crazy. OK, in terms of retail presence, we have Amazon that is uh, actually dwarfed by Walmart. So you have 20 billion dollars compared to Walmart, 270 billion dollars share of customer retail spend. You have a 6.4 percent for Amazon and we have Walmart 8.9 percent. In terms of U.S. brick and mortar stores, you have 527, including Whole Foods for Amazon and for Walmart, you have a dominating 4,700 stores. Okay. In terms of online retailer rank, Amazon number one, of course, and Walmart number two. And the share of e-commerce sales, you have Amazon taking 40% of the market to Walmart 5%. So you can see the delta is pretty huge when it comes to share of e-commerce sales. Unique monthly visitors, you have a 206 million for for Walmart, for Amazon rather, and for Walmart you have 110 million. And for the US marketplace, marketplace sellers, you have 1.1 million. For Amazon and you have 50,000 for Walmart so you can see again that actually in some corners in some quarters Amazon is really is truly dominating dominating Walmart right now so it's really important to understand that Walmart is kind of new they were they was actually they were launched not long ago actually uh, Walmart fulfillment services was uh, was launched in February 2020 so we're talking about not not too long ago so you know it is an Amazon market right now but Walmart is actually catching up real fast so long story short, Amazon still remains the undisputed number one in e-commerce, accounting for nearly 40% of e-commerce sales today. OK, and the thing is, when the coronavirus actually the pandemic disrupted its supply chain and severely delayed prompt deliveries in early 2000, in early 2020, Amazon still saw a 25% surge in online sales. Think about that. OK, so one thing I want to say about Walmart here is that Walmart actually passed a critical inflection point in 2020. For the first time ever, it was reported that Walmart will surpass eBay as the second largest e-commerce retailer in the United States behind Amazon. So it e-commerce sales jumped 74 percent in the first quarter of 2020. So you have to understand that. So we have a lot of movements in that space here. And Walmart is definitely going to seize that opportunity. So after the overview, let me just talk about the selling fees. Those are really important to understand. So Amazon, let's first start with Amazon. So Amazon's professional selling plans cost $39.99 a month. So there are generally no listing fees, though there is a referral fee for each sale. Okay, Referral fees usually range between 8% and 15%, with several categories charging as much as 20%. And Amazon also enforces a minimum referral fee per category. That's how they make money. Certain categories like media come with additional service fees or variable closing fees. So the vast majority of Amazon sellers, I'm talking about 73 to 75 percent, also pay Amazon fulfillment fees, Amazon FBA fulfillment fees, OK, which are either determined by unit or weight. And storage fees are charged separately, as are many other related services. For, for example, I'm talking about FDA label service, returns, processing and removal orders, to name a few. OK, so when you think about it, so basically 
there are a lot of fees on the Amazon side. You have to really think about it. And these fees, when you think about it, can quickly rack up if you're not keenly aware of how they work or how your inventory is performing. Okay. And let's talk about Walmart. So Walmart, Walmart Marketplace doesn't charge any setup or monthly seller fees yet. So sellers are only charged referral fees that generally range from 8% to 15% similar to Amazon's rate. So Walmart's new Walmart's fulfillment services charges monthly storage fees and per item fulfillment fees. So when you think about it, when we think about the WFS fees, they are simple compared to FBA. However, far less sellers are eligible for the program right now. So only existing Walmart marketplace sellers can gain access and new sellers are not likely to be approved right now. Okay, so it's really important. So aside from those fees, Walmart requires UPCs for every product you want to list. And when you think about it, UPCs can cost several thousand dollars for a batch of a hundred or more codes. Okay, it's really important. So GS1, the official provider, also charges annual renewal fees starting at $50. So you can see that right now it's really complicated. The, the things can add up really fast on the Walmart side, okay? One thing you need to understand here is that similar to Amazon's FBA services, Walmart has started its Walmart fulfillment services, okay, which take care which takes care of the storage and delivery of products to that third party sellers don't have to. Because so third party sellers don't have to do this. The new service has many benefits for sellers because it helps them get two day shipping and priority buy box placement, which will result in more sales. Okay. And so when you think about Walmart, I want you to think about referral fee, the Walmart fulfillment services for fulfillment fee. So that's the fee that Walmart charges for fulfillment services for an order. And you have storage services. Let's talk about the onboarding. This is very important. So let's talk about onboarding and listing. So let's first start with Amazon. So Amazon actually offers a touchless launch process. So once you have actually purchased a selling plan and set up your, your seller center central uh, account, you can create your first listings through a number of options. So you can create individual listings manually through seller central. You can upload product listings in bulk using Amazon's inventory file templates, or you can tap an in, uh, integration partner like Zentail to automatically format and categorize your product listings. Okay, and uh, most categories on Amazon require products to have a standard ID, such as a universal product code, a European article number (EAN), or an international standard book number (ISBN). Okay, but if your products already exist on Amazon, you should be able to add your offer without a GTIN. In some categories, you can also request GTIN exemptions to get your products on the marketplace. Okay. And one thing we have seen in our research is that one of the most difficult aspects of listing management is uh, keeping up with Amazon's constantly changing criteria. Okay. So think about that. For example, in 2019, Amazon overhauled its shoe sizing requirements with little notice. So sellers were forced to submit a slew of new attributes for every shoe listing or risk having their ASINs removed. Okay. And uh, so let's talk about Walmart now. Now Walmart marketplace is notoriously harder to onboard. New sellers must sending an application and undergo a trust and safety review. We have actually covered this on other shows here. How do you onboard on, on Walmart? So during that process, sellers need to demonstrate previous marketplace experience, a high level of professionalism and uh, other qualifications. So this review based on our research can take several weeks, although working with an official partner can actually help you actually get accepted faster. So once you are accepted, you will receive a launch checklist with step-by-step -step instructions for registering your company. So you can create a new listing via manual setup, Excel upload, API, or through a software partner. Okay, this is totally possible. Keep in mind that Walmart's API are relatively underdeveloped, so they can be hard to work with if you don't know the right way to format your product data or can keep up with continual changes. So this is really important. And another core difference is that Walmart requires a UPC for every single product you list. Think about it. So if your product doesn't have one yet, you will have to obtain one. And Walmart does not currently offer a UPC exemption process. So this is really important. So this requirements based on our research is a source of headache for some sellers. Let me talk to you about pricing. So let's talk about pricing and buy box competition. Okay. So in pricing, I'm talking here about pricing on the platform. Okay. Not pricing in terms of paying fees to Amazon or Walmart. So let's talk about Amazon first. 
So the, the whole thing here, the whole thing is that Amazon wants to be the everything store, right? So they operate a marketplace open to all sellers. No, no criteria. Okay. It's US marketplace has about 600,000 active sellers with more than 86 new 86,000 new sellers joining this year alone. So this is a significant percentage of uh, this sellers are based abroad. Okay. And this is kind of important. So that being said, having the lowest price is not the only key to winning the buy box. So what I'm trying to say here is that when you have so many people, so many sellers, you got to have a, a low price. However, you don't need to, you don't need to constantly lower your price because if you're trying to win the buy box there are other criteria that they actually are accounted for when we analyze the buy box um, criteria there are other elements okay quality of the product the pictures high resolution okay and you have to also think about the fact that the fba or seller fulfilled prime sfp sellers historically beat out any other sellers even if their prices are slightly higher this is because amazon can guarantee on time non-defective delivery deliveries more more consistently than the average fbm sellers this is very important and on the organic front price comes second to your sales history okay so the higher your sales velocity the more likely you are to rank on amazon searches search pages so things like text matches product availability reviews and selection are other important ranking factors let's talk about walmart so walmart is unsurprisingly strict when it comes to pricing so uncompetitive pricing is the number one reason for getting delisted for on its marketplace okay and so walmart they constantly delay its products okay and so you have to think about price parity you have to think about price leadership so pr price parity means what it means if one of your products can be purchased from your store on a competing website at a lower price including shipping the product will be delisted on walmart and in terms of price leadership if one of your products can be purchased from any seller on walmart.com or any competing site at a drastically lower price including shipping the product will be delisted okay so those are things you need to think about so competition overall is lower on walmart with just 46,000 sellers who are all domestically based walmart marketplace offers prime real estate for a new seller okay sellers get 13 times more visitors a month compared to sellers on amazon okay but it's important to understand that it is a less saturated place right now but it is it is going to be it is going to very soon to be very uh very competitive so buy box competition therefore is also less intense okay so it's also important to know that walmart they actually restrict repricing to approximately once per day so you cannot use a repricer in the same way you would on amazon so pricing updates need to be extremely deliberate while at the same time reactive to various market variables i want to talk to you now about fulfillment okay so when we think about fulfillment so let's talk about amazon so amazon rewrote the rules and effectively recalibrated consumer expectations when it comes to shipping right so prime members now enjoy free shipping on both two-day and next-day deliveries so you have to think about that so when you think about more than 73 percent of amazon sellers using fba to gain access to the prime badge then this is a it has this has become the norm okay so with uh, amazon you actually have fast shipping and greater buy box share so Amazon FBA program set the bar exceptionally high for online shopping convenience and consumers now expect fast shipping for their online purchases. So according to Walmart, consumers are less likely to convert on offers with a five plus day shipping window, whereas with a two day offer, they can see a 30% conversion lift. So basically, brands and sellers who can offer nationwide two-day shipping on their products can enroll in Walmart's two-day program, resulting in improved searchability and buy box percentage. Okay, so let's just talk about, you know, Walmart now. So Walmart, what they, they actually recently launched their own loyalty program to rival Prime similarly making fast shipping a core benefit so through the program the company offers unlimited same day shipping on all grocery items and other perks like a scan and go service for in-store shoppers okay so there are three ways to qualify for two-day shipping tags for example you have to self-fulfill so you must have been a marketplace seller for at least 90 days and you need to meet strict performance standards before being able to apply we have actually covered this on other shows 
and uh, you there is a way another way to actually qualify is through deliver so this is walmart's official fulfillment partner so when you outsource fulfillment to deliver it's actually 2r so deliver okay you are pre-approved for walmart's fat shipping tax and there's a third option this is the walmart's fulfillment services so this is the this service is only available to established marketplace sellers but new sellers can also complete a form to express their interest suggesting that walmart plans to roll up to roll it out more broadly in the future okay so it's really important to understand that when we talk about shipping versus uh, versus uh, versus uh, uh, fulfillment walmart and uh, and amazon are actually head to head they are basically competing they're competing really, really uh, strictly here. One thing I want to say here is that Walmart, compared to uh, Amazon, has affordable storage fees. Okay, so Walmart fulfillment services offers consistent storage fees that are comparable to FBA, with monthly storage fees starting at 3.45 per unit. And Walmart also stated that there are no long-term storage fees, which is a stark contrast with Amazon FBA. So this is where they win the game, really. So, however. If inventory stagnates in Walmart's fulfillment service, it seems it seems likely that Walmart will implement LTS fees to incentivize liquidation and better inventory forecasting. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another session of the Awesome Sweaty Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation. We are comparing Walmart fulfillment services to Amazon FBA. So let's talk about performance. So performance standards, okay? If you want to be a seller on the platform, what are the uh, the performance standards that you must meet as a seller? So Amazon tracks three performance metrics around sellers, which require you to maintain an, an ODR, it's called ODR, an order defect rate under 1% tracked over 60 days so odr is defined by negative feedback claims under the company's a to z guarantee and credit card charge chargebacks you need to keep your cancellation rate so seller cancel orders at or below 2.5 percent over a seven day period you need to keep your late shipment rate at or below four percent over both 10 day and 30 day periods for seller fulfilled orders only so if you fulfill through FBA, these metrics are moots because Amazon will take responsibility for them. But if you self-fulfill, you generally receive a warning for your first offense and a chance to submit a plan of action before your account is, is, is really at risk of suspension. So that said, disputing an Amazon warning or suspension notification is part art, part science. So really think about that, okay? So for Walmart, so Walmart tracks, they also track three core metrics although they are slightly different from Amazon's. So as a Walmart marketplace seller, you are required to keep a 90-day ODR at less than 2%. So ODR accounts for orders canceled by sellers, product returns, late deliveries, and customer complaints. You need to keep your on-time shipment rate above 99%, which you can meet by confirming shipment and entering the tracking information before the expected ship data that is created when a product is sold. And you also need to maintain a valid tracking rate above 99%, which you can meet by providing a valid tracking data when you confirm shipment. So those are really important. And one thing I want to say here is that Walmart would typically work with sellers who, fall, who, who fail performance standards as long as they are actively addressing the violation. But if your ODR gets too high, your account is at risk of suspension. This is really important. And one thing I want to say here is that while Amazon allows fees to be withheld from returns for various reasons, Walmart will issue a full refund even if a customer returns wrong or damaged items. You can try to dispute the refund by contacting Walmart seller support. And one thing I want to say here is that while FBA does offer deeper reporting to sellers and the extra service of fulfilling orders for select websites of Amazon, Walmart is quickly enhancing their reporting too. So they have made impressive improvements okay, to their reporting over the last three months, including working closely with their approved sellers on creating dashboards. So these dashboards will help sellers understand product performance, as well as identify which products are not yet sold on Walmart and which products have the highest opportunity to perform well on the platform.
let's talk about branding opportunity. So we're talking about branding opportunities on both platforms. So we are speaking about branding and advertising opportunities. Very important to see the, the distinction here, folks. Okay, so let's talk about Amazon. So one thing you need to understand is that uh, a whopping 78 to 84 percent of Amazon searches are unbranded. They are unbranded, meaning consumers are looking for a type of product instead of a specific brand. So this underscores the importance of advertising to create brand awareness and convert the sale. And partly as a result, advertising on Amazon is growing rapidly. Okay, so both search result pages and product detail pages are becoming increasingly cluttered with paid placement, which dominate results above the fold. And, and Amazon also offers branding opportunities and services for those enrolled in its brand registry. So perhaps the most important of this is, is protection against IP infringement or inaccurate content and listing provided by unauthorized sellers or resellers. So another important benefit is the ability to create more distinctive listings using what they call enhanced brand content. This is really good though, really, really good. So while the registered brands can access brand analytics data for, let's say, uh, you want to have deeper insight into your, your customers, Amazon still owns all the customer data. Okay, very important. What about Walmart? So as a more traditional re retailer, Walmart is better known for the brands it carries. There is a higher chance that buyers may search for or filter products based on brand, though a majority of searches are likely still generic. Okay. And uh, Walmart is far less saturated with advertising than Amazon. So only 1.6% of its sellers currently advertise. Okay. And one thing we want to say here is that you need to think about Walmart also so because Walmart ads, they are they can be trickier to manage because they work on a first price auction. So in other words, you pay whatever amount you bid when you won the auction, even if it's 10 times higher than the next highest bidder. Amazon, on the other hand, uses a second bid model whereby the auction winner pays just one cent above the second highest bid. Okay, so those are things you need to think about. And as of 2021, M Walmart started offering a brand portal that serves as a much leaner version of Amazon's brand registry. It is more like, a, let's just think of it as a ticketing system for brand owners who notice IP infringement. But this is a step in the right direction. So Walmart's application process further helps to reduce infringement concerns by requiring proof of ownership, experience, and other qualification. So overall, here is actually the, the overall, when we talk about overall customer satisfaction, let's talk about what you really have to do. So Amazon is a, is a mature e-commerce marketplace with nearly eight times more sales than Walmart and ubiquitous consumer recognition, right? It has invested heavily in developing and refining a wide area of user-friendly seller tools, all available within Seller Central. So it can be also a cutthroat world that where, as one seller put it, you have to consistently watch your back. So Amazon can be opaque and capricious in its business dealings with sellers because they have a dominant marketplace uh, position, right? If, if you have a monopoly, that's what happens. So many therefore approach Amazon with caution. While traditionally Amazon has been treated as a business strategy all its own, today's sellers are looking to diversify and eliminate concentration risk across any part of their operations. This is where Walmart comes into play. So Walmart, compared to Amazon, one thing, you need to, one thing you need to understand, Walmart has a long way to go in its technology. Walmart Seller Central pales in comparison to Seller Central, Amazon, you know, according to a lot of sellers. So aside from features, Walmart Seller Center, not Seller Central, but Seller Center, is uh, reportedly difficult to navigate. So performing basic tasks can be tedious and it's often easier to work through a third party integration partner than to work with Seller Center directly. So as a marketplace, many would agree that uh, it is uh, a great channel to be on. It has great potential, but sellers have reported relatively long intervals between sales on Walmart and disappointment in sales value. Okay, so this could have something, something to do with uh, the product category because one thing for sure you need to understand is that some categories are getting notable traction while others are still quiet. Okay, so if we have to put it all together in terms of listings and uh, in terms of listings, Amazon is faster. 
okay amazon is faster they give you more templates a lot it's a lot easier building a reputation it's a lot easier to build a reputation on walmart because it is less competitive okay it is it is not as saturated as amazon is in terms of managing fulfillment right now amazon seems to win this game here because amazon will pick will pack ship and provide customer service for sales orders okay walmart is still doing the same thing but their their program is still underdeveloped this is really important to remember okay so this is what you need to remember so the bottom line what's the bottom line the bottom line is it depends on what you see yourself five years from now okay Amazon's massive advantage online is been is been unbalanced for now. Okay, now Walmart is coming strong. You have to understand. For sellers, both channels have their appeal. Walmart has demonstrated that it's in the game for the long haul, and many eagerly await for it to gain even more momentum. Okay, so the path to success for sellers is unique on each platform. So as an Amazon merchant, you should not expect the same type of results or user experience on Walmart experience on Walmart marketplace so it's solely up to you what is your strategy and uh, yes thank you so much for your attention I really appreciate it in today's conversation we were actually doing a comparative analysis between Walmart fulfillment services and Amazon FBA so we give you an overview of, the, of both platforms so both platforms have uh, their pros and cons so we looked at the seller, the selling fees, the onboarding process, the pricing, the fulfillment, the performance, the branding opportunities, and the overall seller satisfaction. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.